Hi, we're with you again today. I'm Pastor Hank Canners. We're going through our sequence of events in the last days. Very, very important to know and understand this. Um, I'll mention again that uh, on our website, regionalkingdomnetwork.ca, end game book, which is what I'm teaching here, can be downloaded. We will also have the uh, overhead and the graphs up there that you can download and see. And then we'll also, have, we're going to put the notes that I'm teaching from up there also. So you have to book the notes and the overheads. Uh, it'd be great material for you to learn and then to teach others uh, because it really needs to get out there, this message. All right, in the, uh, where we left off last time, uh, we went to the sixth seal to show you there the appearance of Jesus and his wrath is coming. And we said, uh, as we studied that, we said there's a great tribulation before that. Then we ended up going to Matthew 24 to confirm the sequence that we have. And right now we're going to put up our uh, fifth diagram of our timeline, our fifth graph right here. And on this graph then we have added those things that we've talked about so far. And uh, just uh, concentrating here, we're concentrating here on the bottom half of that seven year period from the abomination on down is where we've been teaching and putting all this in place. So uh, from our last teaching, we talked uh, about the sign of the sun and moon, appearance in the rapture from Joel and the book of Acts, and also the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And from Revelation chapter seven, in our last segment, we talked about the great tribulation just before that time. So there's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit during the Great Tribulation uh, because of what Joel said and of what Peter said. And they said it's going to be just before the terrible day and before the glorious day, which is the glorious appearance of a God. All right, so we've confirmed that all so far in the sixth seal and uh, chapter seven, Great Tribulation. The raptured saints in heaven, they came out of Great Tribulation. We explained that. And so we have that all on our number six graph here in different colors so you can see what we added. And we are now in Matthew 24, where we went last week at the end and showed you that the apostles asked Jesus three questions and he's answering them. And he's talking about the general situation in the last days. But the most important thing he says right off the bat is watch that you are not deceived. Wow. Big deception coming in the last days. And um, as I finish this sequence of events, I'll talk about other things concerning the last days, and I'll talk about the scriptures that speak about that also. But what we're doing now in Matthew 24, as we explained uh, last week, was that Jesus is speaking in general terms, and then he goes in verse 15 of Matthew 24, He's speaking in all these general terms of the last days. And then he says, So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation. So we know that's when the Antichrist sets up the abomination. And we know from Daniel chapter 9 that that is in the middle of that seven-year period. So it's right at three and a half years. And this is where Jesus is starting now. That's one of our time posts. So you see that on the sixth graph, the abomination. Now, we have our sequence of events there on graph six is what we've gotten so far. So what we read here from this time on, and Jesus is saying this, it should line up with what we have on our graph already, if everything is correct. All right, let's see what he says. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. The reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea, this is talking of the Jewish people, those that are in Judea. Why? Because the Antichrist is going to set this up in Jerusalem in the temple, which is not yet being built. Those that are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the roof of his house go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. How terrible it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. 
Pray that your flight will not take place in the winter or on the Sabbath. We are going, they've got to flee because the Antichrist is there. He wants to kill all the Jewish people. And we will see later in the book of Revelation, we're not there yet, that God is going to protect the true Jewish people that have the faith of Abraham. For then there will be great distress. King James Version says, great tribulation. There will be great tribulation. See, this is when the great tribulation starts. Not at the beginning of the seven years, but after the abomination. And after great tribulation, we will see that there is going to be wrath of God. So we have the first three and a half years. We'll talk about that later. Then we have the Antichrist setting up the abomination. And now Jesus says, when that time comes, when you see him do this, then there will be great tribulation. Remember in the sixth seal, we saw all those in heaven that came out of great tribulation. Put it together now in your mind. Distress unequaled from the beginning of the world until now. Tribulation such as the world has never, ever, ever seen before. In other words, we cannot explain to you how bad it's going to be because our hearts have never, ever experienced it. That's what you have to realize. And it's going to come with great wickedness. The love of many will grow cold, Jesus just said before. It's going to be during this great tribulation because the church is there during this great tribulation. I will show all this in later teachings through the book of Revelation, the warning to the churches. You will see how it all ties together perfectly but we need to understand the sequence so that we can understand everything else. Unequaled from the beginning of the world until now. As I said, this is what we have to prepare for as Christians. The Lord told me the key to knowing that you're not ready is thinking that you are. See, we have to stay humble. We have to keep purifying our hearts. We can grow, but if we don't keep growing, we can slip backwards. And we have to be in the best spiritual condition that we can be in a perfect, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, full of the Holy Spirit, guided by the Holy Spirit. And he's going to save us from this great tribulation. Some will have to die for their faith, but we will not be overtaken by this darkness that is coming. The darkness that the Bible talks about is also the great tribulation, which is coming right at the very end, but also the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In other words, both kingdoms are going to be released on this earth at the same time. There is going to be a final battle, an all-out battle with the forces of hell and the forces of heaven for the souls, the final battle for the souls of mankind. And only those who are close to Jesus and accepted him will be saved. Those that are wicked will be overcome by the wickedness. Very, very important. And never to be equaled again. It will be the worst tribulation the world has ever experienced. Worse than a holocaust. Worse than what you can imagine. I'm trying to put the fear of the Lord into you. <laughs> if these days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect our sake, those days will be shortened. And the elect here is the church because remember the Jewish people are sealed, 144,000. And they are protected during the time of God's wrath. And God, we will talk about this later, but just saying right now, the elect here, the confusion with Matthew 24, everybody has always thought this was just for the Jewish people. No, this is for the church because we will be here as we see. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. This is during this great tribulation which starts in the middle of that 70th week. If the rapture happened before the seven-year period and everybody disappeared, why would they be looking for Jesus to come here? There would have to be two raptures. And 
because of this great tribulation that there's still people getting saved, God is not going to take the Christians, the strong Christians, out of the world when he needs them the most and he's always expected us to die for our faith. It is totally contrary to the heart of God, the character of God, the will of God, totally contrary to what Scripture says about God, just his character. Never mind the Scriptures. There he is, do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible, to deceive even the Christians, if that were possible. Lying signs and wonders. What happened when God brought the people out of Egypt? When he brought the Jewish people out of Egypt? He did lots of miracles through Moses. But the sorcerers who were into the occult had the power of the devil to do the same things. See, lying signs and wonders. They did the same things Moses did. Moses threw his rod down and it turned into a snake. They threw their rods down and they said, oh, we can do that. And they turned into a snake. But no, Moses' rod ate the other rods. Moses' snake ate the other snakes to show that God was still in charge. All right? But it's going to be similar, lying signs and wonders. Because Satan is going to be cast down to the earth. And the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to arise. And anyone that's been involved in the occult that has not bothered to listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ and be saved, then they will be doing lying signs and wonders also. Both kingdoms being released at the same time for the final battle for the souls of mankind. Got to get this in your head. Got to get it in your heart. This is what the warnings are about in the Bible concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If that were possible. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is out in the desert, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For, why should we not believe it? They're looking for Jesus to come. Because he hasn't come yet. The rapture has not happened yet. For, because as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. You can see lightning a long ways off and everybody can see it. See, and that's the way it's going to be when Jesus comes. Everybody will see him. In other words, I haven't come yet, so don't believe them when they say I'm over here or I'm over there. They're lying. It's not me. Don't go running over there. Don't listen to them. I'm not there yet. And if he had already come before the seven-year period, then why would they even be looking for him? Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately, listen to this now. This is the greatest tribulation the world has ever seen. Immediately after the stress of those days, immediately after that great tribulation, it's only going to last a short time or even the elect would be deceived. In other words, wow, it's the fiery trial that's going to come upon the earth to test everyone's faith on the earth. Jesus said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? And immediately after that test, he says, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. We're right back into the prophecy of Joel, into the prophecy of Peter, and into the sixth seal. The sun will not give its light, or be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. See, that's that time post we said. It's the same time as the sixth seal. It's the same time that Joel is talking about, the day of his wrath. It's the same time that Peter's talking about, the day that Jesus appears in glorious wonder. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. All right, so this lines up completely, 100% with what we have said so far in our sequence of events as the Lord has showed it to us and revealed it through the scriptures. I haven't added to any scripture. I haven't taken away. I haven't twisted any scriptures. Verse 30, at that time, 
when the sun is turned to darkness and the moon will not give its light and the stars fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. The same as Hebrews chapter 12. One more time, I will shake not only the heavens but the earth. At that time, the, son of the, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. Here is where we see Jesus coming for his church. Here we see Jesus coming for the rapture. Right here, Jesus himself says so. Immediately after that great tribulation, the same as it says in the sixth seal in chapter 7 of Revelation, man will appear in the sky and all the nations of the earth will mourn. Revelation 1 verse 7, every eye will see him and all the peoples of the earth will mourn. Why? Because they've missed him and they're not going in the rapture. They've had every chance because there's been a powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but their hearts were not right, and they were overtaken by the wickedness. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky, on the clouds of the sky, the same as when he left in the book of Acts, with power and great glory, the notable day of the Lord. Wow. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call. Here's the trumpet call. This is not the seventh trump during the wrath. This is before the wrath even starts. And they will gather his elect from the four winds from the end of the heaven to the other. The trumpet call signifies the rapture, but it's also the last trumpet before the angels go into battle, pouring out the wrath of God on all of his enemies that would not accept Jesus Christ. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that the summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you will know that it is near right at the door. We won't know the day or the hour, but we will know it's there. When we see the abomination set up, we know all hell is going to break loose and all heaven is going to break loose. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. If only one kingdom was released, then we would all be taken over by the wickedness. And only if God's kingdom was released, then everybody would get saved, even those that aren't faithful, because they would just be overwhelmed by the power of God. And their emotions would be so affected by the power of God that they would all get saved. But Jesus wants only those that are going to be faithful to him forever. This is the testing of our faith that we're going through now. This is why we have to, every trial, everything we go through, we've got to trust God, we've got to read the scriptures, believe God, and as we keep doing that, then faith is growing in our hearts. We don't want to be like the Israelites when they came, when God brought them out of Egypt they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and never got to go into the promised land. Remember the parable of the five wise, the five foolish virgins. Jesus said, when I come, many will say to me, have I not cast out demons and prophesied your name? And he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. These will be Christians. God will honor their faith in praying for people because he wants to heal those people that have a proper heart. But if their heart's not right, if they're doing it just for themselves, for their own glory, when they've had, when they realized everything that is coming and their heart's still not right, he said, depart from me, I know you not. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. One of the things that we can tie our generation to is the Jews taking over Jerusalem. But now we're getting very, very closer, or much closer, maybe years yet, we don't know the time. We're still before that seven year period. Then we still have another three years to go before we get to the abomination be set up, three and a half years. So we could be maybe 10 years away yet. We don't know, maybe five. We don't know that timetable. But it is definitely getting close. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So what Jesus says here lines up completely, 100%, with what the conclusions we've come to already. So this is the rapture of the church. Let me just 
look at a couple more scriptures here to tie that in even a little bit better. And um, let's look at 1 Corinthians 15 and 52. As Jesus said here, at a trumpet call, the trumpet call. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. Let's start in verse 50. <clears throat> Paul says, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. <clears throat> Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. The last trumpet. Not the seventh trump of Revelation. The last trumpet before God goes into battle with his wrath, on, pours out his wrath on the world that has not accepted Jesus. For the trumpet call, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. We will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable and the mortal with immortality. So this is when there is the resurrection of the dead. This is, see, we will be, um, those that already died in Christ, they will come back with him and receive their glorified bodies. We who are still alive, we will receive our glorified bodies right there and then, and we will ascend into the heaven with him, with the clouds. And then we go to heaven where we'll have the marriage supper of the Lamb while the wrath is being poured out. Awesome story. When perishable has been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no answer to all of this except Jesus and a personal relationship with him. Wow, wow, wow. Only God could put this plan together. This is how I know the Bible is true. Well, I know it because it's God's word, but no man could have come up with this plan and the way it all fits together. How many times have we studied end times and we couldn't figure it out? And how many different prophecy teachers who, who say they studied it and the Holy Spirit showed them this? Same thing as I'm saying. But yet we have all these different theories. You have to judge. You have the Spirit of God in you. And I'm teaching you what the Lord, I believe the Lord has shown me. But you are responsible to go through these scriptures as I have. Listen to these things again. Make sure you understand it. Study it through. Don't just listen to it and want a quick revelation and run off. You can't do that anymore. You have to spend time with God. The Holy Spirit has to reveal this to you so that you realize in your heart how important that this is. Read the book of Revelation because there it talks about the wickedness that is coming. It talks about the wrath of God. The warnings to the churches in the book of Revelation. It's the revealing of Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ. When he is revealed, these things will come to pass. We're going to tie things in the book of Revelation together with this, um, and you'll see how everything fits together. All right, let's also go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This also talks about the rapture, just to confirm that this is where it is. I have to take you through the scriptures. I can't just talk about it and say, this is there, this is that. Let's go read it. All right. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's start in verse 9. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance, and for this we labor and strive, that we put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, and every, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to public reading. Excuse me, I have the wrong scriptures. I'm in First Timothy. <laughs> Let's back up. All right, 
1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Those were good scriptures too. They're good instructions for the day of the Lord also. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 13, chapter 4, verse 13. I'm going to get this right yet. <laughs> Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep, those that have died, or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep, those who have already died and have gone to heaven, and he will bring them with him when they come to receive their glorified bodies. And the dead in Christ will rise first. That their bodies are dead, not their spirits, not their souls, their bodies. According to the Lord's own word, this is important here. According to the, Paul is saying, according to the own, his own word. He's going to speak of the rapture, but according to the Lord's own word. When we think of the word of the Lord, we think of the Bible. Paul is not quoting the Bible, he's writing it. He is quoting what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. That's where Jesus talks about his coming. Jesus himself, in his own words, tells us the timetable and where he shows up. According to his own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. There's the trumpet call that coincides with the rapture that Jesus said in Matthew 24. And Paul is quoting this according to the Lord's own word, what Jesus said in Matthew 24, because that's where Jesus says, when the trumpet call, I will collect my people together from the four corners of the earth. The dead in Christ will rise first. After that, who are still alive on our left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Wow. So there again, we have it all proper sequence. <clears throat> now, we're going to go to Second Thessalonians. And we're going to start in verse... Chapter 2, 2 Thess Thessalonians, cha no, Thessalonians chapter 2. And this sort of puts the icing on the cake. And I left this to last because if people are pre-trib, I've taken them to a sequence. I haven't changed any scriptures. They're all locked in with what the Holy Spirit showed me and what Jesus said perfectly. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, concerning the coming of our Lord... Jesus Christ, and are being gathered to him. This is speaking of the rapture, us being gathered to him. We ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy report or letter supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come, or is at hand, or is very close. See, there is a lot of confusion about prophecy in those days. Paul taught in 1 Thessalonians about the rapture and the coming of the Lord. Then they got confused by other people who said different things. This is what's been happening in the body of Christ with, with prophecy. Somebody says this, somebody says that. But here you cannot change these scriptures. I'm reading exactly what they say. And Paul says, don't be alarmed as it has already happened or it's very close. Don't let anyone deceive you. That's what Jesus said. In any way, for that day, that day that we are gathered to him, will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. The man of lawlessness is the Antichrist. He is revealed or unmasked when he sets up the abomination in the temple and declares himself to be God. That's when everyone knows who he is. We might know who he is before that, but that is when he is revealed for who he is. Before that, he's a, he's a man, but he's not known to the world yet as the Antichrist. But when he sets up the abomination and declares that he is God, and the devil gives him all his power, then he is revealed. And so the rapture cannot happen until after the Antichrist is revealed. It's the same as what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. Now, people that are pre-trib, they twist and pervert these scriptures so bad I quoted this to a man 
who was pre-trib, and I said, you know, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarm prophecy. I said, that's the rapture. I mean, just read it. That's what the rapture is. He says, no, that's not what it means. Well, that's what it meant the first time I read it. Then they tried to teach it out of me, and they'll go back to the Greek to change everything and pervert everything. They pervert scriptures. That's the same man that told me that, that all these things happen all at once during that seven-year period. No, there's a sequence to things. As we have shown you already, there is a sequence. And so they'll go back and say that, well, let's go on here in verse 4. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. And so this is talking about the Antichrist. We're going to deal with this more next time. But this is the whole concept of Jesus not coming as a thief in the night because there is a sequence for Jesus to come as a thief in the night, they say the rapture is imminent, that Jesus could come tonight. He can come tomorrow night. No, he can't, the Apostle Paul says. And all the scriptures we went through show you where he's going to come. We still don't know the day of the hour. We will never know that. We don't even know when that seven years starts. When we do know that, then we can find out some things. Even when the abomination is set up, we still will not know the day or the hour. See, Moses didn't know the day or the hour that the flood was going to start, but he knew that it couldn't start until he had finished the ark and got the animals in. I know that it won't come until the church, everyone that can be saved is saved. And they're all in the church. And so we can understand these things. And so here again, these scriptures in 2 Thessalonians, that the pre-trip people pervert so bad, they go back to the Greek, and it says that the Antichrist is there until he who is taken out of the way, he who holds him back is taken out of the way. Well, that's the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's taken out of the earth, and that happens at the rapture. And, you know, it talks about a rebellion or an apostasy, and, you know, it's a falling away from the faith. As Jesus said, many, the faith of many will grow cold. They say it's a falling away from the earth. They just misinterpret everything because this throws their pre-trib rapture right out the window. And we're going to talk more about that. Please do not judge people that teach this. I don't judge them. You have to judge their teaching. You have to judge my teaching. Do not judge them. Do not judge me. But we have to know truth, especially for the days we're living in. So, you know, maybe you had a, a, some of my teachers that taught me, my favorite teachers that I grew in faith, they taught a pre-trib rapture. But when... The Lord showed me this. I said I didn't agree with their teaching on the rapture. But it doesn't mean I have any disregard for them. See, that's a bad attitude if I had that. But I do have to judge their teaching. You have to judge my teaching. You hear my teaching, you hear their teaching, now decide which is true. But you have to be humble for the Holy Spirit to give you the revelation. So do not judge the teachers, judge the teaching. We've all made mistakes in our doctrine somewhere along the line, and God has straightened us out, all right? So do not be very emphatic about this. We are the body of Christ. God wants unity. They have, everybody that's taught in prophecy, they're good people, wonderful people, love the Lord, uh, have done a lot of great for the kingdom of God, for God. Do not judge them. Only God is the judge, all right? But you can still, they have a lot of great teaching, so do not judge them. Judge the teaching whether it's right or not. All right, I'm going to close with that, and we're going to come back to this next week, and we'll continue on from here. And we're going to tie in some more things. We're going to look. Uh, there's more scriptures to, to tie in the sequence that we have. Every scripture we go to will reinforce this sequence that we have put together, and then you will understand the whole thing. Then we've we got other things we want to teach about the end times and prophecy. And we'll continue on that, but getting this sequence done is the most important thing for now. So God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, we just bless everyone that's hearing this today. Again, Lord, open up the eyes of their understanding. Lord, give them wisdom. Lord, that they would see the scriptures for what they say, that we don't have to twist any 
this Jir word, everything fits into place. If this sequence is of you, then everything, all the scriptures will fit that sequence. And we thank you, Father, that as far as we've seen that has happened, and as we look at more scriptures, as you've given them to me, we will tie this all together. But Father, that your people would awaken to the times we're living in and know what they should do, which is purify their hearts to get ready for your coming, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.